catch up with a most extraordinary group of women. We're going to talk about the usual stuff, work, life, family, but we're also going to have an important conversation about these things, our breasts. With everything else that's going on in our lives, we often forget about the most important thing, which is our health. So let's talk about breasts. It's amazing how many women are affected by breast cancer. We were just filming down here this morning. We started chatting. Tell us your story. I was 33 and I had a little two and a half year old boy and you just don't expect that you'd find a lump in it for it to be breast cancer. And what kind of treatment have you gone through since then? So I had a lumpectomy first to remove the lump and um, then after that I had six months chemotherapy. Um, and then after my chemo I had a double mastectomy and um, the reconstruction which I'm finishing off today. What was it like having the double mastectomy? We tie up so much of our femininity and our sexuality with our breasts as women. Yeah, it was very confronting um, to wake up with no breasts and be flat, flat chested and, uh, you know, large scars. And, you know, also waking up with no nipples, no, uh, you know, no femininity there, no resemblance of what, what it used to be. So that was hard for myself and also my partner. And where are you off to today? I'm off to East Sydney Private Hospital for some surgery. What would you say to other women about all this? Be aware of your family history. Do something about it. Got a four-year-old boy. I do, Oliver. He said to me last night, so, Mum, have you got your new nipples yet? And I said, no, Oliver, not yet, but I'll let you know as soon as I do. So, um, you know, they keep you grounded and uh, keep you strong. I'm off to see my GP for a breast cancer check. I had a bit of a scare about seven years ago, a false positive. And I'm embarrassed to admit this, but I haven't checked since. I haven't done any self-detection, even though I've got a really strong history of cancer in my family. And I've got very dense breast tissue, so it's difficult to pick it up on a mammogram. This is the start of my journey. I had a scare about seven years ago and ever since then I've been meaning to go back, meaning to go back and just haven't done it. I've been incredibly negligent. Several of my friends have been diagnosed with breast cancer in the intervening years and we've got a really strong history of cancer in our family. One half has been killed by different types of cancers but you know what it's like when you're working, you've got kids. I just haven't gotten around to seeing a doctor again. If it's detected early, there's a 96% survival rate within five years for women with breast cancer. So, you know, knowledge is power and taking control of your own health journey is incredibly important for all women. So I'm actually feeling quite positive about going to see the GP. A little bit nervous, but overall positive. As much as I, I wish I could say yes, I've been doing self-examination regularly. I've tried it a couple of times, but I don't really know what I'm feeling for. There's so many lumps in there, I just freak myself out every time I try to give it a go. I'm convinced I've got cancer and then I just stop it and forget about it. So I'm hoping she'll take me through how to do it and what to feel for. So during October, because it's Pink Awareness Month, I do a breast check and wouldn't feel anything. And it's not like getting a pap smear where you have to go every two years. Like you don't start till you're 40. And this was just a fluke um, that I felt a cyst. Well, my friends know that we were too young for it to really affect us. Um, but since my diagnosis, I have been chatting to my friends and, they, and they've told me that they've started to check themselves as well. Um, you just don't really think it's going to happen to you. You just don't think it's going to happen to you. Even though the stats are huge, the stats are it's one in eight, so why doesn't it happen to you? Of course it can. In, in every kind of big social circle, the stats are that one of you will have it. So, yeah, yeah, it can happen to you. So, Tracy, what brings you here today? 
Well, I've got a really strong history of a lot of different types of cancer in the family. In fact, it decimated one side of my family. I had a false positive about seven years ago and my breasts are really dense and lumpy and I, I really don't know how to self-examine. So I just feel like I haven't been looking after myself in regards to early detection of, of some of the cancers that we might have in our family. So um, can, we, can I ask you a little bit more about um, what happened seven years ago? I had a mammogram and as I said, my breasts are, are quite lumpy yeah. and they thought one of the lumps might be problematic. I had a needle biopsy on it and initially they thought it was positive and then it turned out to be negative. So I was delighted that's, that it was yeah, negative. It's a relief, isn't it? A relief, but the stress of thinking that it was positive gave me an awful fright. Now, anyone had breast cancer in your family? Not that I know of, no. Um, do you check your breasts yourself? Oh, look, I'm hopeless. I, I used to check my breasts occasionally, but I never knew what I was looking for, you know, the pea-sized lump thing. I always kept feeling pea-sized lumps because mm. I've got lumpy breasts, so I gave up because I don't really know how to do it. Yeah, so um, the recommendation is that if women can um, check their breasts every month, that's a really good thing to do. So maybe we'll every run through... Every month? Every month. Whoa. So uh, <laughs> maybe if we could run through that today, we Thank can you. check... Um, I feel incredibly negligent. No, Thank no, you. that's right, you're here today, so it's all good. So we'll check the breast today, and um, because of what happened seven years ago, I think probably we need to do some more testing of the breast, so maybe some x-rays, mammograms, something like that. So we'll just head over and check your breast now, Tracy, if you like, okay, pop over here. What we normally ask people to do is just yep. once a month, just before they get into a shower, have a look in the mirror, okay? So just pretend I'm your mirror. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is just having a look to see, do my breasts look normal for me? Put your arms up in the air, that's right. And I'm gonna check. Mm -hmm. And you're just looking in the mirror because when you put your hands up above your head like that, you're activating different muscles under the breasts. And you're just having a look, what looks normal for me with my hands in the air? And then you're going to put your hands onto your hips and push down. Same again, you're activating a different muscle underneath the breasts. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, and you won't be do, doing this checking bit, but you'll be having a look in the mirror. What? How do my breasts look normally for me? Mm -hmm. I didn't know check, any of this. <laughs> I'll just check under your uh, arm. No, but that's good. You're learning now, so that's good. And then I check for the glands under here. You don't need to do this. Oh, OK. OK, so now you're about to go into the shower. You'll just get a little bit of shower gel or a little bit of soap on your hands. Yeah. And you're going to run round the breast like it's a clock, uh -huh. feeling the different parts of the breast using this part of your hand. Oh, okay. okay, not the tips of your fingers, because if but you use, why is that? well, if you use the tips of the fingers, you're always feeling lumpy bits, and it's all a bit scary. Oh, what's that? What's that? What am I feeling? So, if you use this part of your hand, you get to feel the texture of the breast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So from 12 o'clock all the way around, just checking as you go, and then just feeling underneath the nipple to make sure there's a little divot mm -hmm. underneath there, a little dent. And as long as that's there, that's normal. And if it's not there, yeah. then that's a, a, a reason problem to pop in. That's something right. Something to check. So that's good, everything feels normal there for me today. Great. So Carly, now you've taught me to self-examine, I'll, I'll try to do it once every month, yep. but what other steps should I be taking on going? Well, Tracy, you've had um, a problem with the breast before. You've had to have a biopsy, which um, I imagine at the time was quite a traumatic experience. I think it's important that we keep a good eye on your breasts. You do have a bit of a family history of cancer, even though it isn't breast and ovarian cancer. So I think it'd be really good to get a baseline look at what your breasts are doing now, because it's been seven years. So we check with the best X-ray we can do for the density of your breasts at this age. OK, that'd be terrific. Thank you. My mum was 36 when she was diagnosed with breast cancer, so I was about 14 at the time. Um, witnessing that was one of the hardest things. Um, she didn't cope, but it was made even worse by the fact that my nun had been diagnosed in her 40s and in her 50s, and my great-grandma was 68 um, when she passed away from breast cancer. So it wasn't just my mum's cancer, it was my family's cancer. And I went in for my last high-risk screening and they wanted to rush me upstairs for a biopsy and my mum burst into tears and I just said, that it's ending with me. I said, it's such a small price to pay for my sanity and for my future. So I had my breast removed at 25 and I haven't looked back. You know, it's not an easy thing to go through for any woman, but breast cancer is a hell of a lot worse. really terrific going to see my GP and having a good talk about this because it made me realise that I have been pretty negligent about self-examination so I'm committing to myself now that I'm going to do self-examination once a month now I know how to do it properly. Now that I'm driving to get the 3D mammogram though I'm starting to get a little bit nervous. Uh, 
think a lot of women put this kind of stuff off because we're busy, we don't have the time, it's inconvenient, but most of all, we're worried about the pain or the discomfort of having a mammogram. But the more I think about it, the more I think that pain and discomfort is nothing compared with what would happen if you had a breast cancer and it wasn't detected until it was too late. I'm nervous, but I'm excited because I finally feel like I'm taking action. Well, I'm just about to go in to have my 3D mammography and I've got to say I'm starting to get that visceral fear that a lot of women get when it has something to do with our breasts. We're attached to them, they feed our children, they're associated with our femininity. And the thought of breast cancer is a very deep-seated fear for most women. I'm pleased that I'm getting it done. It's empowering to know that if there's something there, hopefully we've caught it early and we can do something about it. But there is still that fear there of, oh my gosh, what if they find something in there that's not supposed to be there? Put your hands all the way down. Deep breath. Start putting the compression now. Mm -hmm. If it gets too much again, okay. I'll do it straight away. How are you going there? I'm doing my yoga breathing. That's good. That's good. How about that now? All good? That's quite fine actually. Are 3D mammograms better for women with dense breasts? Uh, yeah, I th well, I think that's they're of more use in women with dense breasts. When, when breasts are completely fatty, it's usually not difficult to see a tumour because the tumour is white and the fatty background is black. But when the white dense tissue of the normal breast is uh, there in significant amount, as it is in your case, then tumours can hide amongst the normal breast tissue. So uh, this tomographic effect of the 3D is very useful in separating out the normal breast tissues from that little tumour that might be there. Now you've had a 3D one which we think is more accurate. In fact, I've already found one breast cancer with that uh, that can't be seen even in retrospect on 2D. So I think uh, having had the 3D, you can be much more reassured than uh, if you'd had 2D only. Peter, who would be considered to be at risk of breast cancer and therefore appropriately would require 3D mammography? Some women have a genetic tendency to breast cancer. They are clearly at higher risk. One can test the, uh, their genetic makeup to look for these breast cancer associated genes. But more typically, we would consider women who have a family history of breast cancer, particularly in their first order relatives like mother, sister, to be at high risk. If they have two such first uh, degree relatives, they're at highly likely to have this breast cancer associated gene. So these are the women we consider at high risk. Peter, I know usually the results would be sent to the woman's GP and the GP would then discuss those results, but for the purposes of our filming, can you tell me my results today? Yeah. I can tell you that everything's normal so that you can relax in that regard. Oh great, thank you. <laughs> That's a huge relief. Because the cancer was quite bad, it was either me or the baby had to go. And so that was a hard decision. But as my husband said, if you do go ahead, Annette, and have this baby, he said, we won't be a family because you won't survive it. Um, my husband is, he's fantastic. Um, without him, I, I don't think I'd be here. Um, so supportive. It was such a relief the other day to get the results of the 3D mammogram and the ultrasound and to know that I don't have breast cancer. But for so many women, their journey is vastly different. It is something that women don't talk about enough. We don't know our risk factors. And even if we do know our risk factors, we don't self-examine enough. We don't get mammograms frequently enough. And we're really not aware of what we should be doing. 
Tonight, we're going to have a lovely dinner with some friends and family members where I want to hear their stories. I want to hear whether they are at high risk or if they've even looked into it, whether they do self-detection. When was the last time they had a mammogram? These conversations are really important to have. Look, we'll also have a good laugh about your femininity and our breasts and whether we feel comfortable poking and prodding at them. I mean, this is the kind of thing that women can sit around and have a laugh about. So I'm really looking forward to it. Well, thank you so much for coming along. It's so important that women take control of their health. Cheers. 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 It's a kiss film. <laughs> Did any of you feel your body had failed you? You were scared of your body? No. You know, somebody said something to me a long, long time ago, and it was, why did I get cancer? The question you should ask yourself is, why not? Why are you so important that you're not going to get something? So I'm just one of the one in eight women that got, got breast cancer. And I think you just have to try to take something positive out of it. Absolutely. Yeah. You did. Oh, heaps. Mm -hmm. Survive. Yeah. It's not a fight. It's not a battle, though. No. I didn't find I it get a battle. Really cranky when people use yeah, that does language. that bother you when yeah. people talk about it like that? Survive. Didn't fight. Didn't hard fight enough. hard and enough. So wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It's not fault. a battle. Yeah. It's dreadful. So yeah. this this whole concept of risk is a really interesting one. Does anyone know about the whole dense breast thing? Very dense breast. No. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sometimes I have a dense head. <laughs> I don't know which one's smarter. Let me feel. This one's going to make you up. Which one? Do a bit of a test. Nice. If it's close, about it. I didn't realise about it until uh, the last couple of weeks, but um, it's harder to diagnose cancer for younger women because we've got denser breasts. We have less fat in our breasts and when they come up on the mammogram, it's really hard to, to see whether there's a lump in there or not. So increasingly with women getting cancer younger, they're recommending you get testing in your 40s as opposed to waiting until your 50s which I found really interesting. I had no idea. I, I knew with self-examination I had lumpy breasts, but I didn't realise that that would be problematic with mammograms as well. And now they've got the 3D mammograms, which means you can see more clearly. I, I had no idea. But there does seem to be a lot of women in their 30s who are getting diagnosed. Yeah. So how are they picking it up? Is I was 33 when I was diagnosed. Yeah, only I'm astounded. How do your children cope with it? How did you explain it to them? Um, I basically just said to them, and called cancer and it makes you very sick but then what we're going to do is find out the surgery to get rid of the lump and then chemo which will make them more sick but then it makes it better you know just very simplistic but they sort of got the idea because we can't hide it from them they're going to see you feeling like crap and, mm -hmm. um but i think when all my hair fell out of it was about easter time so i try and make this a bit fun because i didn't want them to feel scared and daunted and What's mum hanging into? I was like, oh, come here and work out all the washable paints. I said, I paint my head like an Easter egg. I know how to ball. I know how to wear a beanie 50 days after that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't wear a shot as well as I thought. <laughs>years I've become really passionate about women's issues because I think a lot of us get so caught up in what's expected of us, whether it's in the workplace or within the family, that we forget about ourselves. We really do. We don't look after our own health enough. So this project is so important to me. Everyone says women talk to each other a lot, chat, chat, chat. We sure do, but often we don't talk about the most important thing, which is something that could kill us or make us very sick. That's why I got involved with this project, to spread the message that detection is the key. How much would you hate it if, if something had to happen, if you had to have a mastectomy or, or something like that? I'd cut them off tomorrow. Mm. Don't care. Agreed. So would not care. To save your life. Yeah, absolutely. No, no. Seriously, wouldn't bother you? I, I would... There would be a moment's contemplation over four or five bottles of wine, but at the end of the day, you know, I'd cut my foot off if it was going to kill the rest of my leg, you know? You've you got to take those things into account. And, and if, if it was predisposed in my family and the gene was there, I would absolutely get tested, and if there was a very high chance of, of doing it, I'd consider cutting them off now.
Well, I had a lumpectomy when I had cancer, but I had a scare about two years ago. And while I was sitting there waiting for the results, I thought to myself, I'll just have them both chopped off because you can get great tips now. And I would love a fresh set of tips. I mean, great perky 19 year old. Didn't have to be that eager. Yeah, she she was like, I've got an excuse. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Am yeah. I, uh, it, and you get to choose the show. I'd be absolutely yeah. devastated if I had to. But if my boobs were in some way rejecting my body, then I would. But I, th I think in seriousness, I mean, it is such a feminine thing about your body. It gives you shape. It gives you the ability to feed your child. It gives you the ability to walk out and feel good about yourself, so I don't think it would be an easy decision. I took out a couple of things from tonight. It was, it was about the importance of taking control of your health as a woman. It was about the value of early detection, the importance of having mammograms and asking for a 3D mammogram, and above all, actually living life to the full. I feel so privileged to be sitting here with such a group of wise, funny, interesting <laughs> women. So I think at the end of this lovely dinner, we should tell every woman that we know to get regular mammograms, to try to self-detect, and just to take control of our own bodies, because we've spoken about a lot of things that are, are very concerning and stressful and negative, but we can be empowered by this. And I think that's the message out of tonight. Mm. Cheers. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. So I've been producing this doco for the last week, but all the building up to it and development and research, um, it's making me realise that, you know, I, I should be doing something about it, especially if I'm preaching to everyone else and I'm doing this documentary, which is actually a call to action to say, go out and tell your friends and go and get checked because it saves your life. I feel pretty ignorant that I'm not doing anything about it. And I should have the other day when we were sitting down and being briefed by the doctor prior to our interview with Tracy, and she said, yeah, you're high risk. And she said that I actually should have started um, like serious testing and checking 10 years prior to when either my mother or my sister, whoever was younger, got diagnosed, so 44 and 66. So technically I should have been starting at 34. And that scared the living daylights out of me. It's absolutely terrifying thinking about cancer. No wonder we feel so lost and alone. But what I've learned from this week talking to women who are living with breast cancer, medical professionals working in the field, and friends and family who I'm delighted to say have a detection plan is this. You need to find out whether you're at high risk. Because every woman is different, every body is different, every breast is different. So please, don't think it can't happen to you. Get tested.